Take a look now back at the Localizer DME Runway 21 approach into Portland and let's take a look at the minimum section again. Now we've already talked about the minimum descent altitude of 700 feet if you're flying a straight in approach to Runway 21. But notice the minimum section also has circling minimums. In this case, for a Category A airplane, the minimum descent altitude is 720 feet MSL. Circling minimums will usually be higher than the straight-in minimums as they are here. Not always, but usually. And that makes sense, because when you're circling, you're not on an exact defined approach path the way that you are if you're flying a straight-in approach. And there may very well be obstructions in that area around the airport that you're circling in. Now here's how the FAA calculates the minimums if you're going to circle to land. The minimum descent altitude will give you at least 300 feet of clearance over obstacles in the area you'll use for circling. And the protected area is calculated by using a table based primarily on your approach category. For a category A aircraft with a VSO of 90 knots or left, less, which covers typical single-engine training aircraft, the radius is 1.3 nautical miles from the ends of the runways, from each runway. So the protected area would look like this. And the assumption is that you will stay within 1.3 nautical miles of the runway while you circle. But if you're flying a category B or C or D aircraft, the radius will be bigger, as you can see, because you're flying faster and need more room to maneuver. So on this approach, for a category B Bravo aircraft, the MDA goes up to 740 feet. For a Category C aircraft, not only does the MDA go up to 760 feet, but the visibility goes up to two statute miles. And if you're a Category D aircraft, Delta, which most airline airplanes are, your MDA goes up to 1,000 feet and your required visibility goes up to three statute miles. Now, why would you want to circle in the first place? Well, maybe only one runway has an instrument approach to it, but you don't want to land on that runway because of a strong crosswind or a tailwind. Or maybe the runway's closed, either for construction or there's a disabled airplane on the runway. But for some reason, you want to circle and land on a runway other than 2-1. And in that case, you've got a higher altitude on this particular approach. Now, if you're going to circle to land, your above ground level altitude has a different name. In this case, it's called a Height Above Airport, abbreviated HAA. It's not a height above touchdown because you're not landing straight in on the runway you're making the approach to. Because you're circling around the airport, your height above airport, HAA, is the height of the circling MDA above the airport elevation. Take a look now at this localizer delta approach to Gillespie Airport in San Diego. On this particular approach, when you take a look down in the minimum section, you find that unlike the other approaches we've looked at, there are no straight-in minimums shown. There are only circling minimums shown on this approach. In order to have straight-in minimums, the approach has to meet certain criteria, such as how well the approach is lined up with the runways, as well as the rate of descent required between the final approach fix and the runway. Sometimes the minimum altitude for crossing the final approach fix is higher than usual above the ground due to obstacles and terrain. In fact, you cross Samos, the final approach fix, at 4,000 feet, which is almost two and a half times higher than normal. Notice that on this approach, the localizer is lined up with the runway. However, there is a lot of rough terrain out here to the east that keeps you high on the approach until you are very near the airport. 
And as you can see in the profile view, the angle of descent from the step down fixed Debbie is 6.88 degrees instead of the normal 3 degrees. If you divide the altitude to lose by the distance to the runway, you'll find your required rate of descent is 746 feet per nautical mile. In order to qualify as a straight-in approach, it must be within a 30-degree angle to the runway, and the required rate of descent must be no more than 400 feet per nautical mile, no more than that. If the approach doesn't meet that criteria, you will not have any straight-in minimums published in the minimum section. You only have circling minimums published on the approach. But what if you're shooting this approach and you break out of the clouds before you reach that minimum altitude? In other words, you have the runway in sight and plenty of time to descend for a straight in landing on that runway. Can you land straight in or do you have to circle because there's only circling minimum shown? Well, logically, you can land straight in provided you've got the runway in sight in time to make a normal approach for landing and you've been cleared to land straight in if there is a tower that's open at the airport. If there's no tower, you don't worry about it. You just fit in with whatever the traffic flow is.